Hey there, Murray from MBM again. Going a little bit outside of our field at the moment. I don't know, but one of the things I find with, with being a music teacher, um, so many music teachers turn up and they're instantly expected to know everything about everything that has anything to do with music. You know, this person's played piano for 20 years, suddenly they're the band director, they're running the school assemblies, they're expected to be able to do backing tracks for the dance group, blah de blah de blah. And it can be overwhelming. So I just thought let's have a quick look through what a mixing desk does. And mixing desks are becoming increasingly uh, easy to use with digital sound. They're becoming a lot more uh, user friendly and quite often there's less knobs on them or you can turn up to school and find they've got the 32 channel battle axe up the back that's got knobs that do everything and they say fix it and you go well I don't know what I'm doing so please don't feel that I'm, I'm treating you like an idiot I'm treating, going to talk to you just simply on how to use or get a desk to work very quickly and what each thing does so we're going to zoom in just on the desk here now and you can see the first thing we need to understand is what's on the back a power supply duh some desks have a built-in amplifier they're called power desks some don't this one doesn't this is called a passive desk and it needs to be connected to an amplifier but all desks need power to run okay so you need power there's a power switch that's all cool you've then got your main outs now this is what connects you to either your amplifier which then connects to your speakers or it'll connect to your if it's a power desk direct to your speakers some have this type of jack called an XLR some have just a quarter inch phono jack some have things called speak on whatever turns you on they all do the same thing okay we also on this particular desk have a USB S check your USB too this one base is very basic it just takes a stereo feed off whatever comes into the desk and sends it off so I can record a performance it doesn't really give you control or it doesn't give you anything at all this is an analog desk it is not a digital desk that's a nice thing to have if you're recording performances and all the rest but it's fairly limited all right so we come up to the front now on the front here in this particular desk and all desks will have this can I say the simplest most efficient way to figure out what's going on and what's going wrong is to follow the cable you have someone talking on a microphone the microphone stops start at that microphone and work back it might simply be they've switched it off for as a sound person microphones with switches are deadly I usually tape them up so they can't touch them follow it might be a cable that's broken microphone leads break the more expensive ones you get the more expensive they are to replace but you can do it come in are they plugged in is it in the right spot this is the center of what you do up the top we have inputs now we have a number of them here and one of the things that you do notice with most desks is they have XLR which is a balanced lead which gives you your best sound or monos all the way through that's okay whatever you need to put in whatever comes in is what you put into these that's your input right below that we have what is commonly called a gain control or a trim pot now a gain control think of this like a gateway a gateway that is allowing sound into the desk you can set it so that it picks up the sensitivity of the microphone if you've got two mics going and one person is very loud one person is very soft you can alter that the amount of sound that you're allowing in generally don't run them flat out because anything that runs at the top of its gain the top of its response is not giving you the best so anywhere from 50 to 80% is giving you your best range of sound. 
So we can adjust that and go, well, okay, sound is coming in. These ones are what we do with it. Okay, so we have, in this one, we have, on each channel, we have three EQs. An equaliser is fantastic to, if a voice is a bit trebly, we can pull that treble out. If the bass is boomy, we can pull that down a little bit. We can manipulate the sound to make it sound as acoustic, as live as possible. So you can use these on each of these, each channel. So you have one coming in on channel one and it's not working. We can alter that sound a little bit, add or remove that particular frequency. We then can come out. Now this is, this one on this one is called the monitor or auxiliary channel. We can actually go and we have on here, you've got your main outs. Now forget them for the moment, but we have some effects out here. We have a monitor scent. So if you have a vocalist, for instance, and they want to hear the guitar, and the vocalist is in one, the guitar is in two, we can turn the vocal monitor off if they don't want to hear themselves, or, and we can give them more guitar. So that means we can throw whatever back to the stage so the musicians can hear themselves. It bypasses nearly all your effects and things like that, but it's, a, it's just a sense, it's just there. This one is an effect. Now we have on this particular unit, we have built in digital effects here that we can dial up and plug in, or we can actually put into a, an effects loop. So you might go, well, uh, I need an echo. I've got echoes here, I can plug that in, right, bang, bang, bang. The downside of having an onboard effects thing is you can only have one effect for all channels. If we, for instance, we wanted to be able to send that elsewhere, we might have used this for channel one, but channel two might go out to a compressor unit or something like that. That just gives us control over the sound again. Then we have the pan function. Pan means does it come out the left speaker or the right speaker? And you, again, can do what you want. It might find where that's useful is if your speakers are not equidistant. You know, let's say you've got one at the back of the room, one at the front of the room, you can control what sounds come out or level of sound that comes out with each. That's fairly simple. The other thing we use pan for a lot is if you're trying to make comments, for instance, say for instance, you've got a live band performance, you might have the band going in there on one side and the comments being made on the other side. So you're basically creating two tracks so people can listen to either the music, the comments, or mix them up and get both. Simple, do I want the left, do I want the right? Now, this one, being a, a Mackie, one of the things that I find fun with them, the mute button. Some, you, like mute, you mute the track. That cuts that track, which is great if you've got someone handing a microphone around or in between speakers or someone who insists on touching and adjusting the microphone before they speak, you can just mute them. And that way you don't get all that noise uh, of banging and stuff like that, or someone drops a mic or there's feedback on that mic, you can instantly stop it. However, Yamaha desks, for instance, work backwards. They have an on button, which you have to actually arm the track. So just be careful with that one, that one you can get caught with. The famous sliders down here, always a lot of fun. The ones over here, these are your main, well, that's your main switch on this one. That's your monitor, so you can do all that. That's how your stereo returns, you know, um, effects returns. You can do an overall. This is going out the other end. This is going to your speakers to your front of house. Of course, your volume. And they have a little gray area there, which is the optimum setting. So above that, you're driving it a bit hard. You can, but it might crack the sound up. Below that, you're really making this, the amplifier, useless. We need to, to bring it up and then adjust things to suit. Okay, this side there's our, our um, we can send things to monitor, we can send effects to the monitor there, that's a, just one of those little tricks. We can use, send what we want to the USB and control that volume. We can, uh, we have headphones, there's a headphone jack up here so you can listen to what you like. Always good to keep your headphones low. 
that way you're listening to the best sound when you're doing it and of course we've got there the tape level if you want to run you know music in between it doesn't have to be a tape can be an ipod can be anything you can go into these ones here which is the tape uh tape in uh, the old rca jacks which lots of people still use and you can run your iphone whatever into it and control the sound that's coming straight out to the mix you've got here you've got levels so you can see whether you're feeding back whether you're pumping out enough sound out the other end all that this one has an eq as well which goes across everything so we can set that to the room and we can then set it to the individual performer one of the things that i find i'm just having a look this button here this is the wombat button right they call this a wombat button because if you use it without knowing you suddenly find that you look like a wombat because you can't get sound this is the break button now it's, it's some have some haven't mackies have had these for a long time this mutes everything and you'll see it time and time again where it's accidentally pressed it's not real obvious and all of a sudden people are tearing their hair out wondering why there is no sound coming out of the desk and it's simply that little button there so always have a look for a cross channel mute an all mute or a break button now that's really simple so you can get a PA system running really fast what we need to do is get this thing up this is a tool this is not your performance get it up get it running get over it get on with what you really want to do and that's play your instrument and make a good sound it's simple follow the sound source start microphone cable in allow that in fix the sound to, so it's good quality where do I send it I'm sending it out right I'm sending it out there it's coming out there that's it if it's not go through and problem solve along the chain too many times I've seen people things go wrong and rather than logically following the flow they'll rush off and change the microphone and it still doesn't work why because some idiots hit the, the brake button when you're not looking really just think your way through it it's simple it's logical you can do it catch you around at the next performance